In this video, we're going to be covering common carpal bone injuries that can be seen on plain film. When assessing the wrist, we take a PA, an oblique and a lateral film. And the first thing to do is to trace around the bones to look for any breaks in the cortices. So starting with the distal radius and ulna, and then tracing around all eight of the carpal bones as shown here. And once you've done that, trace around the proximal metacarpals, again looking for any breaks in the cortices. Once you've done that, you want to look at the alignment of the carpal bones. So you draw the three carpal arcs, as shown here. And you look again at the proximal metacarpals. On a lateral film, you want to look at the distal radius, make sure it lines up nicely with the lunate, which is this moon-shaped bone. You can see the scaphoid on a lateral, and this is worth assessing as well. And you want to see the capitate sitting nicely in the lunate. Let's take a look at the injuries related to the lunate bone, which fall in a spectrum. At the least severe end of the spectrum is a scapholunate ligament dissociation. On a PA view, you shouldn't see a distance of more than 2 mm between the scaphoid and the lunate, as is seen here in this example. This confirms a scapholunate ligament dissociation. Next in the spectrum of injuries is a perilunate dislocation. And more severe than this is a lunate dislocation. You can tell the difference between these two injuries on a lateral view of the wrist. Just to recap, in a normal wrist, you should see the distal radius lining up with the lunate and the capitate. So how do you tell the difference between a perilunate and a lunate dislocation? In a perilunate dislocation, you'll see the distal radius lining up with the lunate, but the capitate will be out of line. In a lunate dislocation, you'll see the distal radius and the capitate in line, but the lunate will be out of line. Let's take a look at this example. On this PA view of the wrist, we can see that the lunate has an abnormal triangular configuration. When we look at the lateral view, we can see the distal radius lines up with the lunate, however the capitate is out of line. And this is in keeping with a perilunate dislocation. Let's look at another example. Here the distal radius lines up again with the lunate and the capitate is out of line again in keeping with a perilunate dislocation. However, when we look at the PA film, we can see additional injuries. There is a fracture through the waist of the scaphoid and also a fracture through the radial styloid. Fractures of the scaphoid are very important to pick up because they are the most common carpal bone fracture and also because of their distal blood supply, they're prone to non-union and therefore prone to AVN as is seen in this x-ray. Let's take a look at this third example. The distal radius is in line with the capitate, however the lunate has dislocated anteriorly and this is a lunate dislocation. And again on the PA and oblique views you can see a triangular shaped lunate. In this fourth example we can again see that the distal radius is in line with the capitate and the lunate has moved forwards and is dislocated. When you look at the AP, we can see that there is an associated fracture of the radial styloid. Looking at other carpal bone fractures, this bony fragment seen posterior to the carpus is in keeping with a triquetral fracture. On this lateral and oblique view of the wrist, uh, when we draw the carpal arcs, um, they seem in line. However, there seems to be an abnormality um, at the region of the hamate and the lateral confirms a hamate fracture. On this particular case, when we look at the carpus, we can see that the arcs are intact. However, there is an abnormality at the base of the fifth metacarpal in keeping with a fracture. In summary, we have talked about the common injuries, including fractures and dislocations uh, of the carpal bones.